Thank you, Kelly. And thank you for the great turnout so that we could have some real substantive conversations in our community about health outcomes and the change in medicine and healthcare that's upon us. Um, I've been asked to participate as a member on the Oregon Prescription uh, Guideline Task Force that's uh, going to be giving guidelines to all practicing physicians, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants about the prescribing of opioid prescriptions. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about today, a very high-level introductory uh, conversation. I've had this conversation in our other county conversations as well, and they were very well received. And the thing we need to understand about the current practice of prescribing opioids for pain medications is that we do understand that pain is real. And pain, people do suffer from pain. Non-cancer chronic pain is what we're really talking about though today. And often pres prescribers, physicians, will prescribe something called opioids, which will go by the name of hydrocodone or Vicodin, oxycodone, oxycontin, morphine, fentanyl. Those are just a few of the names that you might recognize. But the United States is in the middle of an opioid overdose epidemic. And these drugs aren't as safe or as, or as effective as healthcare providers once thought they were. Many years ago, for a number of reasons, we, th we really believed we were doing the right thing. By trying to realize that while pain is real, we had powerful medications to help alleviate, alleviate people's pain. What we are finding out though over a couple of decades of doing this is that for people that specifically have chronic non-cancer pain or musculoskeletal pain, that the outcomes overall aren't as great. And we were actually seeing an increase in accidental overdosing of opioid medications. In Oregon and the United States, accidental overdose from these pain relievers actually causes more deaths each year than auto accidents. And years ago, if we would have had a lot of car accidents, auto accidents without the use of seat belts in cars, we would have risen to the challenge and came up with solutions, putting seat belts in cars to help reduce the risk of dying in an auto accident. So this is now the dilemma that we are being faced with nationwide. And in fact, Oregon has the dubious distinction of being number one in the nation in terms of amounts of prescriptions of opioids that are being prescribed. So we have a lot of work to do. And we can't do this without the help of the community, the help of the patients that we serve, and the help of the physicians and providers that are seeing these patients. We're all in this together. An average of three Oregonians die every week from prescription opioid overdose. But many more, that's the tip of the iceberg, many more are actually developing an opioid use disorder. And I have to raise my hand as a physician that prescribes opioids is we have the prescriptions in our hands. So we have to do a better job of educating regarding the risks of opioids so that we can really try to change the paradigm that we're currently in, change the accidental overdose that we're seeing in the communities. This is a startling t st statistic to remember. The United States has less than 5% of the world's population, but we consume 80% of the world's supply of painkillers. 5% of the population of the globe but 80% of the opioids. And I know from neurological studies, Americans do not have 80% more nerve endings in their body than other people in the, in the, in the uh, world. Methadone itself is very, very cheap. And methadone itself accounts for just 2% of the prescription painkillers in the US, but it's tied to more than 30% of the deaths from painkiller overdose. So, we know that long-term use of opioids have some very serious side effects. It's not as helpful as other treatments now, and studies are showing this. And unused opioid medications in the home may be misused. We know that taking too much opioid pain medications at once can stop a person's breathing, and that's what can lead to death. There's something called respiratory depression in the brain, and this is where the opioids work on our brain receptors. And we may not know we're going to sleep at the end of the night. We've taken a painkiller for pain relief. We may have also taken a medication called a benzodiazepine. Um, Valium is a benzodiazepine. Those two combinations together can actually be deadly. 
because it stops your ability to breathe through the night and you're not aware of that decrease in your respiratory effort. So we have a strategy. We are part of a task force that's regionally coming together of prescribers, law enforcement, county mental health and addictions, federally qualified health clinics, Oregon State University, our hospitals, community pharmacists, community sheriffs, local police, EMS and fire, and it continues to grow in leaps and bounds. And these meetings have been occurring since last August of 2015, and we have strategies of the three legs of the stool. We're looking at patient education, public education, and then physician and provider education. And while we're rolling out these educational platforms and these guidelines for prescribers, it's going to be very important to never, ever vilify a person that has pain. That's number one. Never vilify, vilify a prescriber that's prescribed these opioids before because we really did think that we were doing the right thing. So we cannot point fingers at each other, but we have to come together to realize this is a solution that needs all um, aspects being looked at. And we will get this to together, get through this together. I'm very confident of the future, and I'm confident of that because we have a lot of people at the table that are invested in having these conversations. I actually credit IHNCCO with having the ability to convene all of these uh, colleagues. Because before the CCO concept came into the state of Oregon, I knew my colleagues in public health, but there was never really an avenue to try to come together and have substantive conversations about community health. And it's because of the coordinated care organizations that has really allowed us to put our differences aside and look at the community health from the community health's perspective. So bottom line is that we can get through this together. We have solutions. And if you or family members are in um, danger areas of utilizing opioids, we want you to know that there is help and that we can change the paradigm of the amount of accidental overdoses that we're seeing in the United States and in Oregon specifically. So thank you.